Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. Before I get started, I'm going to take a second to remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon because that's the only way you will know for sure when I upload new videos. I'm going to start with an item that's actually very disappointing. This is a mini portable vacuum cleaner, but I only realized this after receiving the item because the seller of this item was advertising this as a dust blower vacuum cleaner. It's the usual keyword stuffing that AliExpress sellers do. I was searching for a dust blower after seeing an ad for a similarly shaped dust blower and my search ended up on this product page. I didn't read through the product description carefully, I didn't read the feedback of the other users which was pretty obvious and I paid about $10 for this garbage which is actually a USB powered vacuum cleaner with no actual suction power. Now my plan is to see if I could actually modify this to act as a dust blower on the existing motor or maybe uh, switching the uh, insides of this to a brushless motor for increased blowing power and maybe add some lithium uh, cells into the handle. Who knows, maybe this will turn into a project video but if you plan to use this as a vacuum cleaner as it comes, don't bother, it's garbage, there is almost no suction power. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils, so it's definitely worth checking them out. Next up I got one of these blue silicone soldering mats. You can use it for general work, not just for soldering. But the big advantage of this is that it shouldn't melt if under high temperature being made out of silicon. They claim this can resist up to 500 degrees Celsius. I don't know about that. I would be happy if it can resist 350 degrees and I can do a quick test of that with my soldering iron which is uh, currently set at 350 degrees. And it appears to survive the soldering iron tip at 350 degrees Celsius. That's good enough for me. Even if I insist on a particular point, it still doesn't damage the silicon mat. The mat has these various thin pockets on the surface, which you can use to uh, store small screws and parts that you're taking off from whatever you're working on. And these will come in a variety of sizes and even different colors and different style of pockets. So pick your favorite. You won't be disappointed as this will probably save your working table surface from some nasty burns. But you do have to consider one disadvantage of these. They are not uh, ESD safe so these are likely to gather some static electricity and if you're working on some sensitive stuff uh, it might get discharged in, uh, in that particular chip and uh, it might fry it. But if it happens to get flux or other dirt on the surface here's another advantage you can just wipe it with some alcohol soaked wipes or even wash it in the sink with some soap and water and it will be uh, like new. Next up I got a uh, cigarette lighter socket splitter so this will plug into your car's 12 volts auxiliary socket and split it into two sockets. This is, this is to allow you to connect two devices at the same time. You do need to be careful though not to exceed the maximum rating for that socket so don't go connecting two high power devices at the same time through this adapter because you might blow the fuse or cause the socket uh, or this adapter to overheat and melt. Generally speaking, cigarette lighter sockets are rated for 10 amps, but you will have to check your particular car manual to be sure. This one does have a 5 amps mains rated fuse. Uh, it's a glass fuse and the quality is not terrible, but it's not great either. It even has an LED to uh, let you know when um, you've got power present and uh, that's a good indication if the fuse is blown or not. Next, I got one of these wiper arm pullers and if you've ever tried removing the wiper arms from your car, you probably experienced how stuck they can get over the years, which makes them almost impossible to remove without one of these special tools. This basically works like a clamp, these two small arms go underneath the wiper arm while the screw 
uh, gets pushed on the attachment screw of the wiper arm. This way it will release it from its stuck position. And this is the cheapest I could find on AliExpress, so I don't expect a great quality from this, but considering how often it's going to be used, I'll, it will probably last me a, a good while. Next up, we're still in the automotive department. This is not electronics related, but I'm pretty sure you might like this and find it useful. It's kind of big, doesn't fit in the frame very well, but this is basically an L-shaped piece of plastic uh, with some Velcro straps on the bottom. Uh, you can use this in the trunk of your car as long as you have it lined with carpet. This Velcro will stick it to uh, where you place it and the, the whole rack will now provide support for the various stuff that you carry around preventing them from uh, accidentally sliding inside the trunk i got the big model it's about 45 centimeters wide but there are also smaller ones that you can get it's so simple and yet uh, it works nicely for keeping bottles upright or a bag of uh, groceries here are some pictures and ideas on how to use this in the trunk from the place i bought it and as usual you'll find the link to this in the description below the video. Next, I have this uh, VagCan Pro OBD Diagnostics and Programming Interface. And this is not the original, but just a clone that comes from AliExpress. So that's why they give you a disk with the software. And the hardware interface is likely a clone of the original. And I would advise getting the original if you can afford it, especially if you run some kind of business and earn money from this. I'm purchasing this for my personal use, so it doesn't make sense for me to pay a few hundred dollars to get the original if a clone can do the same stuff for me. This interface is for the VAG group, meaning uh, Audis, uh, Volkswagens, Skodas and Seat. And I already have a diagnosis interface called VCDS, which works perfectly. But this one called VAGCAN Pro should allow me to do something extra. Uh, that is to read and write EEPROM and flash contents from various modules on the car, including the ECU. This can be useful sometimes because there might be parameters which you can only change with this tool through the EEPROM of some module, or maybe sometimes you want to upgrade a particular module firmware to a newer version to enable some functions, and I hope this is going to allow me to do exactly that. I have zero knowledge if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to give it a try, um, as this is a field where I would like to experiment and learn more about it. I purchased one that also comes with this dongle which supposedly enables you to use the software. It's kind of like a security device. It's emulated probably to, to trick the software into thinking you have a, a genuine setup. Next I got a bag of 10 pieces inline fuel filters and I don't plan to filter any fuel with this but I remember I had a few occasions this past year where I wanted to filter some liquids and it would have been nice to have something like this available. They have a uh, small piece inside uh, right here and I don't know is that like a magnet to catch any iron filings I don't know it could be I think these are supposed to sit in a certain position when they're installed like uh, upright on a motorcycle for example but like I said I don't intend to filter gasoline but rather use them as a general purpose filter so it probably doesn't matter much in uh, which position they, they sit for the purposes that I'm going to use them. Next up I have some amber LEDs and I have two types here. Both should have a wavelength of about 590 to 595 nanometers and I'm not sure what I should call these orange or amber but hopefully this year I'll have enough time to work on those custom LED bulbs for my car that I've been wanting to do for so long. These are a different package but they're both rated for 1 watts and I quite like the color they put out. I'll just have to decide which one to use later on when I start designing the PCB to hold them. Until then, I can show you how they look side by side. On the left, I have the more classical, larger package for 1 watt LED beads. And on the right, I have the smaller 3535 Cree style package. And uh, this one, you can also order as a 3 watts rated LED and it takes double the current. However, I'm not sure what the difference is physically at die level between the two. I just got the 1 watts variant because at 3 watts the current is too high and it will produce a lot of heat which is kind of hard to dissipate in a small package and I don't need that higher power anyways. As usual you'll find the link for this in the description below the video.
Next, I have a module that's been sitting in my mailbag bin for quite a while and it never made the shortlist to be shown in a video. So now it's surfaced and this is a PWM fan controller with temperature input. It's based on the TC648 from Microchip, which is this uh, tiny 8-pin package that, that does it all. It takes a thermistor input and provides a PWM output, which in the case of this module is driving a MOSFET for increased current capability. This module is rated for 2 amps and up to 24 volts. Uh, with the MOSFET it has installed, but there is a footprint for a, a second MOSFET which is not populated and that could go in parallel for doubling the current capability. The chip and fan power supplies can be different rails without any issues and it can provide 0 to 100% duty cycle with two operating modes. One where it shuts down the fan when the lower threshold is reached and another operating mode where it keeps the fan on on a preset low speed when the threshold is reached. So the fan is never really off. The frequency can be adjusted with an external capacitor but the datasheet recommends 30 Hz as a starting value. So yeah, I quite like this chip. I'm sure this could be useful in a bunch of scenarios where it wouldn't make sense to roll to roll your own microcontroller and write code for a PWM fan controller, you could simply throw in one of these uh, chips which does the job for you. Next, I've ordered some gear to help me with shooting video and I have a fur windshield for my lapel mic. While shooting videos indoors, the factory supplied foam shield is good enough, but if I want to record outdoors and it's windy, I think one of these fur shields is going to help with isolating wind noise. I must say it doesn't feel high quality, uh, not that I've seen a high quality one before, but it's going to be rarely used and it's probably not going to be subjected to a lot of wear. I just hope it's not going to shed its uh, fur uh, too fast, I just hope it will last me a couple of uses. In any case, I will report later after using this uh, fur shield. Next I got another one of these so-called magic arms which has multiple articulations but only a single locking nut that makes it all rigid once you are uh, happy with the uh, position you adjusted. The first one I am usually using in front of my oscilloscope for capturing video on the scope screen. The second one will probably be used for similar stuff in front of my multimeters for those uh, nice overlays that you guys appreciate when uh, I'm doing measurements. I believe these come in different sizes. I think I have the smallest one here, but it's kind of perfect for uh, my setup. Check the links placed in the description below if you want to learn more about this item. Next, I got some protection glass for my GoPro Hero 7. And I use this camera for my outdoor adventures, but also indoor, right here on the bench, whenever I want to get some close shot of me soldering. Due to its size, it's easier to place this on a small tripod and have it right next to the soldering area, without getting in my way too much. Now, this kit contains a piece of uh, um, covering glass for the back LCD and another one from the, for the uh, LCD on the front and it should help me keep this um, camera screens scratch free. And my last item in today's video is a wireless charging pad once again from my favorite supplier of these kinds of products, Base US. Like I mentioned before, I think this uh, brand offers a good price to quality ratio. They're not sponsoring me in any way, I'm just a happy consumer of their products. And this particular model stands out because it's very thin, they claim just 3 millimeters, but we'll, ha we'll have to measure that for confirmation. And it really is really thin, let's measure it. Well, it's uh, 3.5 millimeters, uh, but yeah, I guess you could claim it's uh, 3 millimeters on the package when the uh, actual size is uh, 3.5 millimeters. Uh, it's really the thinnest wireless charger chargers I've seen so far. They also claim 15 watts peak charging capability for this and I'll try to measure that as well. And they claim a bunch of other stuff which I'm not really interested in. It is indeed providing 9 volts on the wireless charging coil as indicated by my tester here but I wasn't able to get more than 5 watts or slightly less than 5 watts out of this uh, charger. 
I'm not sure if that's a problem with my tester here because this is not really uh, a professional tester or if that's all the this charger can output 5 watts considering how thin it is um, you would think that it wouldn't be able to output more than 5 watts of wireless charging power And if I haven't mentioned this uh, before, it is quick charge compatible on the input, so it can take five volts. Uh, it can take up to nine volts from the uh, power brick, which helps with the transfer of energy over this uh, thin input wire. And this is likely the um, weakest point of this product because overall it looks very nice. It looks like it has this metallic frame. It has a glass. Uh, cover over the coil but this uh, USB wire is very thin and this will likely be a fail point if you kind of uh, use this a lot and uh, use it for travel and but if you use it on, on a desk then it doesn't move a lot so it shouldn't break also the uh, USB wire is uh, uh, pretty short at just one meter so this uh, makes it good for desk use uh, but for example, uh, next to a bed, you might have the wall socket too far away from this uh, and, and it's not great for those uh, situations. And I almost forgot to show you this. It also comes with this uh, black uh, pouch. So I suppose the idea is that you can stick the charger in here and then have this sitting on your desk. It does have some adhesive backing uh, and this is very thin so it won't interfere with the wireless charging. That was all for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. Maybe hit that like button to show your support for the channel and I'll see you next time with a new video.